Hello, we are very excited to have Professor Aldo Badiani today with us in our Access Scientist program, in which we will be discussing issues around drug addiction, especially codeine and tramadol, which has become widespread in Nigeria. Professor Aldo is a professor of psychology and addiction medicine in the University of Sussex in England and uh, currently the director for Sussex Addiction Research Intervention Center there in Sussex. All right, um, Professor Aldo, you are a leader in your research field and uh, it's exciting to be able to have this conversation with you. Normally, we think about drugs as working in the same way, but in your recent paper, you showed that cocaine and heroin are very different, and they are influenced by environment in an opposite manner. Can you briefly tell us about these findings? Yes. So, for because of theoretical reason and experimental work, there has been a consensus in the field that all addictive drugs, even with different mechanisms of action, converge on shared substrates, on shared mechanisms. And so there is the idea that you, alcohol works in a way, cocaine in a way, heroin in a way, but then at the end they have a common mechanism of action that make them addictive. Um, but there has been growing evidence that this is not the case, that there are different types of addiction, drugs are not the, the same. And in this paper we show that Individuals who abuse both heroin and cocaine independent from each other, they take the drugs in different settings. So there is something special about the drug that makes the drug particularly interesting mm. in one place, but not in another. And also the brain processes this information in a very different manner. So also the effect of drugs on the brain seems to be very different, um, cocaine versus heroin. Mm -hmm. And they respond to the, to the environment in a very different manner. So, basically, you cannot really understand the effect of drugs if you don't take into consideration what yeah. is surrounding yeah. drug taking. It is around the person at the moment is taking drugs. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so, maybe I should then ask, normally what makes people vulnerable to one drug than the other? Does genetics and environment play a role? Well, as for m many other uh, mental disorders, because drug abuse is considered as a mental disorder, mm -hmm. not by everybody, but there is a consensus that there is a mental disorder. Okay. Uh, there, there, there is, a, there, is a, um, there are both genetics and environmental influences on uh, vulnerability to abuse drugs mm -hmm. or even to become addicted to drugs. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few studies conducted in... Um, Twins, okay. identical twins, to discriminate between genetics and environmental influences. And what it was found in the study is very interesting, but genetic influences are important, but not for all drugs in the same manner. For example, mm -hmm. genetics is very important for the abuse of cocaine and psychostimulants, okay. but much less so for uh, heroin. In the case of heroin and opiates, the environment seems to be more important ah. for a major role. And in addition, it seems that the preference for one drug or the other depends on specific environmental interests that are unique to the individual mm -hmm. and not shared with, the, with, the, with family, etc. Ah, so both both, um, both uh, um, you know, genetics and environment play a role, but the, the relative importance of these two mm -hmm. influences changes as, as a function of drug. Ah. So drug is more important. Genetics for other drugs is more important than environment. That's quite interesting. Um, so, so in such case, then, maybe I should ask, for instance, if someone is an addict, does it mean that other family members are at risk for addiction as well? Okay, so, uh, it appears that overall the big picture I'm talking about here, not mm -hmm. the specific cases, but mm -hmm. the big picture is saying that um, genetic variation, genetics, mm -hmm. Uh, can impart uh, a generic predisposition to abuse drugs mm -hmm. or a, uh, a generic resistance to use drugs. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and, and this change, as I said, is a function of the drug. Mm -hmm. Now, if one f uh, family member is mm -hmm. using drug, mm -hmm. of course that family member is sharing genes with you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, to that extent, it's possible mm -hmm. that 
your the fact that you are a, you are a relative of a person who was abusing drugs, mm-hmm. it is possible your predisposition to use drugs is also increased. Okay. But this is, all, is, uh, is mostly dependent on genetics, not on the environment. So, for example, yes. the fact that you in the family, mm-hmm. your father or mother are abusing drugs, mm-hmm. um, it increases your the possibility that also the children increase in, in, in abuse drugs, mm-hmm. but not because of the example that the they family, see, but it's because of the genetics. I see. Actually, as you know, kids often mm. try to move away from what they, when, they, when they see something in the, in the family yeah. they don't like, they try to move yeah. in the opposite direction. Yeah. So, k- children from a very strict family, they can become a little bit why mm. and children of in a in family in which parents are promiscuous or loose, yes. they can become very strict and conservative yes, yes. As, a, as a reaction. So in a nutshell, what, uh, <laughs> what you are really saying is that it doesn't necessarily mean that if your say, fa- parents do take drugs, you have to t- also get into that. Of course not. The genetics, the environment. Is the most, uh, the genetics and the environment. Yeah, so they interact. The they interact. They interact. As I said. This is more important for some drug than for other. Yeah. It is more important for mm. cocaine mm-hmm. and uh, co- amphetamine, methamphetamine, mm. much less so for heroin, opiates, etc. Ah, that's interesting. I, I guess uh, then from this point, I should uh, kind of come into something more specific. So there's a recent report by the BBC indicating that in northeastern Nigeria, members of Boko Haram terror group and the vigilante group fighting them as well, but take drugs like tramadol. They say that these drugs make them strong and courageous. Are these symptoms why people take such drugs? Well, the, the, the story of tramadol is very interesting because tramadol <coughs> is a drug that combines the effect of opiates, mm-hmm. such as morphine or heroin, mm-hmm. with the effects of psychostimulant drugs, such as cocaine and amphetamine. Okay. It does both mechanism of action. Mm-hmm. There's not exactly overlapping, but there, there is some shared mechanism of action. So it is it's a drug that can produce both effects. Mm-hmm. So it can have uh, both the sedative, relaxing, anxiolytic effect mm-hmm. of, of opiates and the activating uh, effect of uh, cocaine and amphetamine, mm-hmm. which is one, mm-hmm. apparently is one of the reasons the, the, the abuse of trauma is widespread, especially in the, <coughs> in the in the poorest part of the population, mm-hmm. is that increase the ability to keep up with tough jobs. Ah. So you can work longer hours, yes. you are more resistant to, to fatigue, mm. uh, to, to, uh, to, to all the stress mm. of the working environment. And, and of course, mm-hmm. this will, may also explain why people like Boko Haram mm-hmm. and, 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 and groups like that are mm-hmm. using drugs. Mm-hmm. The first reason is that Boko Haram is actually in the, in the drug dealing business. Mm. So they are part of the chain mm. of distribution of, uh, of tramadol mm-hmm. coming from Asia, mm. then, uh, uh, then arriving to the Sahel area, mm. and mm. then be distributed by uh, organizations like Boko Haram and other yeah, yeah, yeah. groups. Re- so then, they, basically, they are, since they, they, they are dealing with the drug, mm-hmm. they are is more, more likely that they're using the drug. Mm-hmm. On top of this, mm-hmm. of course, a drug that increases your performance mm-hmm. is a drug that people in, the, in, the, in, the, in any kind of military operation are more likely to use and abuse. I see. So, so <coughs> now that you mentioned military operation, do you think then in other, say, developed parts of the world, some people that are involved in military operation also have their drugs that is specific to them. Of course. Think about it. during the Second World War, mm-hmm. uh, there's been a massive use of methamphetamine, amphetamine, methamphetamine, by uh, the German army and the Japanese army. Actually, in, um, the, the methamphetamine was also distributed to the civilian population working in factory. So there was a massive uh, use and abuse of methamphetamine. Mm-hmm. But still now, methamphetamine are used by in, in the military. Mm-hmm. So... Um, Air Force, U- United States um, Air Force pilot mm-hmm. have been given methamphetamine during operation, for example, during the war in Afghanistan mm-hmm. and things like that. So it's still a drug use 
Of course, there is not much talking about this, mm -hmm. but it's reported in scientific research on mm -hmm. experiments done on the military. Ah, so there's a long history yeah. of, of drug use in the military. Mm -hmm. Last of them was alcohol. Mm -hmm. The battlefield of the First World War now. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It smelled the uh, room in the, in, on the, after a battle because people were, getting, were, were, were allowed to get drunk Actually. in order to get out of the trenches and go to die. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> Well, you know, it's also interesting that you mentioned that uh, groups like Boko Haram get access to these drugs from uh, places like um, from Asia. Because in this uh, report by B BBC, they, f they found that tramadol specifically becomes uh, uh, imported from uh, India, so which is quite interesting. But then I wanted to ask this question. So again, this report by the BBC uh, and uh, some other you know reports from Nigeria showed that about 3 million codeine is consumed in one of the largest cities, which is Kano. Uh, you know, and uh, the idea now is, why codeine and then we've got also tramadol? What is the relationship? Why aren't... Well, tramadol, as I said, works a little bit like opiates. Morphine, heroin, codeine, mm -hmm. which is another opiate. Mm -hmm. Actually, codeine and morphine are the two active principles in the, in the opium poppy. Mm -hmm. So they are containing an opium. Mm -hmm. um, so they overlap in some effect. Tramadol has additional effects mm -hmm. that make it particularly interesting mm -hmm. as a drug mm -hmm. to, to people who want to increase their performance yes. and, and work. Mm -hmm. Codeine is, is, is a purely opioid drug, mm -hmm. so it produces sedation, and, uh, uh, analgesia, mm -hmm. uh, ansiolysis, mm -hmm. a sense of well-being, mm -hmm. and, uh, and attempt to numb uh, the, the, the response to stress in the body, mm -hmm. so people mm -hmm. feel, feel better. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it helps you to cope with, uh, with uh, daily life. Mm -hmm. Of course it is addictive. Mm -hmm. When people take codeine, often do not realize mm -hmm. that they are taking a drug that is not that different from heroin. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. The difference is that they take it orally, mm -hmm. ingest it. Mm -hmm. They, they do not inject it mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. morphine mm -hmm. or heroin. Mm -hmm. so, so, and uh, we're, uh, am I right to also say that to some extent, that's what you people feel when they take say, something like marijuana. Well, it's a different effect. Still, all drugs produce a different spectrum of effects. Yeah. Um, and, and marijuana, of course, is, uh, is produce some effects that can be similar to some of the effects of opioids, but other effects are completely different. But we get into the, the, the issues of why people are taking drugs, whether they're taking drugs because they want to experience pleasure only, or there are more complex reasons, such as um, um, so-called instrumental use of drugs. Mm. You take the drug to deal with specific kind of, uh, of objectives. It can be resolving a personal state of anxiety mm -hmm. or stress. It can be to increase performance. Mm -hmm. Some people use it to enhance uh, sexual uh, mm -hmm. interaction, mm -hmm. which is also the case of tramadol, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. And um, some people will take it to, to resist to, to fatigue. Mm -hmm. It takes away appetite. Mm -hmm. A drug like amphetamine and cocaine mm -hmm. will increase appetite, mm -hmm. like cannabis. Mm. So you can, you can have a mix of possible yeah. different uses for using different drugs, mm. and different drugs have very different effects, so they are appropriate for different contexts. Yeah. So that's, ne that's never that's make the mistake yeah. of thinking <laughs> that one drug is going to substitute for another, unless they are part of the same family. Amphetamine or cocaine, uh, on one hand, uh, or heroin and morphine, codeine on the other. Yeah, and the clear <laughs> message is that these drugs do not complement each other. They can both have different effects, but in some situations, the effect that you see could be similar. There are some similarities between one drug and mm. the other. Mm. It depends on the extent of similarity. Mm. When they overlap almost completely, they belong to the same family usually. Mm. Uh, some other times, you can have similar effects in drugs that are very different mm. in other respects. So... Uh, yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, so I just wanted to also uh, ask this question. 
You know, these drugs are becoming quite widespread in Nigeria, yeah? And the recent BBC report said that most of the tramadol is coming, say, to Nigeria from India. So do you think blocking this will solve the drug addiction problem? Okay, so this is a tricky issue. Uh, is that it has to do with uh, regulations and prohibitions. Do, uh, uh, do regulation and prohibition work? To a certain extent, yes. So, for example, during the prohibition here in the United States, mm-hmm. when alcohol was, uh, was, uh, became illegal, mm-hmm. uh, which lasted for about uh, 14 years, the number of car accidents decreased, the number of livers, uh, the cases of liver cirrhosis and liver cancer decreased, all related to alcohol use, of course. Mm-hmm. So th- we know that, re- that this kind of, of, of measure mm-hmm. have an effect. On the other hand, it didn't remove the problem of, of uh, alcohol abuse because then you had the criminality dealing with drugs. So it's very difficult to suppress completely something the humans, mm-hmm. for one reason or the other, I want to do. Mm-hmm. Also because then you can find another drug that works in a similar manner mm-hmm. that will take its place. Mm-hmm. So, for example, codeine is, 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 is more easily abused than heroin because it's a drug that is used as a therapeutic, mm-hmm. as a medicine. Drug. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, in most countries, except the UK and other few countries, heroin is not used as a, as a medication. Mm-hmm. So, it is there, it is completely legal. Mm. So it, the, the only possible way to access it is mm. via the black market. Mm. With, with, um, also, um, using the illegal rules. Mm. Whereas coding is more in a, in an appropriate use of the drug. Mm. The same for tramadol. You mm. go to the pharmacy, the pharmacy should ask you for prescription. Often they don't. Mm-hmm. And, they, and, they, and they sell it to you. Mm. If the pharmacist resist and doesn't, doesn't give the drug to you, you can go on the black market and buy the drug. Yes. That, however, is imported as a medication, so it's mm-hmm. not an illegal drug. Yes. So tramadol is a legal drug. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the problems. So many people do not see it as a drug. So they see cocaine as a drug, yeah. heroin as a drug, but now clothing is not a drug. It's a painkiller. And tramadol is not a drug, it's a painkiller. Yes, it's taking too much of it, but there is no stigma attached to it. Yes. So it facilitates the abuse. Mm. Definitely. I think that that's really important. The stigma is really important here because yeah. when you take, say, alcohol, for instance, in northern Nigeria, which is predominantly Muslims, alcohol, you don't take it. So if you take it, does it comes with a stigma. But if you take, say, drugs, so like codeine, because there is no real stigma associated with it, then it's kind of, you feel like, okay, that's not a problem. So I think the cultural context is also important. Exactly. So the social, social context, the social control is important. I guess that many people in, in, in northern Nigeria mm. don't choose alcohol, not because of personal religious reason, but because they will be stigmatized by the community, mm. ostracized by the community. Mm. So there is a social control mm. on what you do, mm. regardless of what you personally would do if you were alone. Mm. And at the moment you remove the stigma, mm-hmm. then, and, and, and society will not throw up on you if, mm. if you do it, mm. then you can use drugs like tramadol because they're okay. Yeah. Even though it's not, you're not much better off than, exactly. than, than using that. And the, and the converse can be for, uh, for in, in southern Nigeria, mm. where uh, Maybe pills may be seen as something you shouldn't do, but alcohol is okay. Mm. So this is the strange mm. way in which society mm. regulates. Mm. Yeah. This should tell you also that any place mm. has its own drug. Yes. I it can be cut in Somalia and Eritrea and mm. Ethiopia, yeah. or it can be alcohol in Italy and France, or... Uh, yeah, and, I, and in fact, I was... Uh, I think, <laughs> A few months ago, I was reading the news that there is one of these countries that has legalized the use of, I think, marijuana or something yeah, like Mariana. that. Yeah, many countries. Okay. In many countries. You can, uh, for example, now you can go in, a, in a, an example, Vancouver, Canada. Mm. There are uh, so, uh, cannabis bar mm. where you can choose the type of cannabis which uh, the combination of active principles that fit your needs. So the, more or less high in tetrahydrocannabinol, uh, the active principle, 
or cannabidiol, which is another component. So it, it is interesting how society changes its attitude. And, and let me tell you, the major reason why cannabis is probably going to be legalized mm-hmm. is that you can tax it. So one of the major, major, <laughs> major encouragement to legalize cannabis in, in, in many countries will mm-hmm. become the fact you can make money. From it. Like it, money from gambling, for example, yes. or money from alcohol, mm-hmm. or money from, uh, from taxation, I mean. Eh? Yeah. So you can, make, uh, you can put taxes on tobacco yes. use, alcohol use, yes. and, 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 and so on. Yes, that's interesting. Um, so I was thinking, because, for instance, I do take coffee a lot, and uh, I see people that take coffee and they become addicted to it, yeah? So I was thinking, in the cases of, say, people <coughs> that take, say, codeine, tramadol, or something like that, do you think then one could say, okay, let's substitute, let, let's introduce like coffee so that people become more addicted to it and then that way it will substitute the problem that we have with addiction? I'm sure this is a very naive question, but what do you think? Well, as I said at the beginning, drugs do not work in the same manner. They are very different effects from each other. So the reason to, be, to, to abuse them and to become addicted to it changes from one drug to the other. Eventually, you can become addicted to anything. Mm-hmm. And indeed, there are people who become addicted to the most strange mm-hmm. kind of uh, stimuli, right? Yes. And um, I would say that there are people who abuse cocaine. Mm, I don't know how many will really fit the, the notion of uh, addiction. Mm-hmm. Because addiction has to do really with lack of control over use. Yes. And I don't think that there are many people who are willing to give up the family or their job uh, to continue use caffeine. Mm-hmm. Whereas many people lose their job because of cocaine use or alcohol use, etc. Yes. Uh, but caffeine, is, uh, if, 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 I bet you said you're using <laughs> how many coffee you drink per day. Well, I'm not a heavy drinker probably. Uh, maybe two, three cups. That's not, but that's, that's not addictive. That's just a normal, no, no, no. A, a reasonable use of coffee. Okay. So if you have people drinking 15, 20 coffee per day, mm. Mm. now you have a problem there. But bet for many of them, if the doctor say you have to stop, otherwise mm. you get mm. heart attack or something, then you will reduce or stop taking it. Yes. Which is, um, of course, they still become addicted to caffeine, mm. but it's a very different type of addiction. Different and for sure, they cannot substitute yes. for another drug. Okay, <laughs> I just thought that. Um, so, <clears throat> now, is there a way of completely treating drug addiction? Wow, this is the sad part of the entire story. We know more and more about why people take drugs, the mechanism of action of drugs, mm-hmm. Uh, we have not made great progress in uh, treating drug addiction. Mm-hmm. What we can do is, in some cases, um, give a, a, a drug that replaces the drug abused by the person, mm-hmm. uh, working more or less in the same manner. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, methadone mm-hmm. or buprenorphine in the case of heroin addiction. Mm-hmm. And the advantage is that these drugs are more easily controlled by the, the, the substance misuse services. Mm-hmm. But we don't have anything for, uh, for, uh, for cocaine or amphetamine that really mm. can play this kind of role. Mm. And we're still, in, the, in, in, in any case, in the, in the area of giving drugs to people. Mm. Because it doesn't matter whether it is legal or, or whether it is used for therapeutic purposes or not, it doesn't matter. You still give something in place of something else. Mm. So if you ask about the cure in the sense that a person stop mm-hmm. taking the drug, mm-hmm. stop abusing drugs, we don't have very much. They, 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 um, ironically, the, mm-hmm. easy, the, the most effective way, mm-hmm. the most successful way so far has been contingency management, okay. which is a, 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 a euphemism, a, a nice alternative to say, I'm paying people to stop taking drugs. Okay. <laughs> so this is a strategy that surprisingly mm-hmm. works. It is cost effective, but as you can imagine, mm-hmm. it's not very popular with people who don't use drugs. Uh, I think it would be the place, the place of society here would be to make people understand that mm-hmm. you are going to pay in any case for drug abuse mm-hmm. because if a drug addict is stealing, mm-hmm. killing, mm-hmm. or, uh, or uh, uh, committing acts of violence against yes. other people, yes. you're still paying a price for that. Yes. And if a person gets uh, sick, it has to be treated, you're still paying for it. Mm-hmm. So it's, at the other end, it's always a matter of trying to 
find the, the, balance. The, the balance there. So, and, but it's a very tricky business, this one. It's very difficult to sell it because many people say, why I'm working hard? I'm exactly. a low business citizen. Why should, oh, not necessarily money, but why should give some benefit to a person who's abusing drug? Yeah. And my reason is that we are all in a community. Mm -hmm. When you're in a community, yeah. you have to deal with people that are... Mm, that are working a little bit at the fringes of the of society for some reason or the other, mm -hmm. and you have to decide whether well, to take care of them, unless you decide you want to to, to yeah. suppress them, which I don't think that that would yeah. be considered <laughs> acceptable by <laughs> most humans, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So 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 then, if that's the case, what do you think is the best level of intervention, state level, community level, or family level, even? Well, of course. The most easy answer to this question, all these three levels would be important. But okay. if I had to put m my money mm -hmm. on one of these levels, I would be, I would say the community level. Mm -hmm. uh, because it has the, 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 at this level you can have the best understanding for the local situation, understanding the, 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 the need of people, mm -hmm. uh, the type of drug that is most abused mm -hmm. because of the country. A, 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 such a large country like Nigeria, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. with such a huge population, Absolutely. with different, I mean, f I, I don't even know whether you can talk about Nigeria, because there are so many different Nigerias exactly. that, 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 that I think you, we are going to, to have very different situation, north, south, east, west, etc. Mm -hmm. So how can you really factor in all these differences in a, in a state program? Mm -hmm. But I think it should be the role of the state is to facilitate mm -hmm. and support effort done by the local community uh, to address the problem in terms of prevention, especially. Mm -hmm. You can also try to, 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 uh, to, to run programs for rescuing mm -hmm. people from their, their condition, but especially to run programs for prevention. And instead of uh, being too, uh, too mandatory in terms of what kind of policy should be implemented, I think it will, the, best, the way, best way to, uh, to approach the, the issue is to measure the outcome. So you can say, well, I, I will provide you with this, with this kind of resources. Mm -hmm. Show me that you are doing the right thing. Show me that you are reducing the number of, uh, of, of uh, addicts, the number of people abusing alcohol, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So problem with alcohol, the huge problem with alcohol mm -hmm. is domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So probably the most dangerous drugs mm -hmm. for aside from the user, for the others, is alcohol. Mm -hmm. Alcohol abuse is, is really killer. Mm -hmm. Women get beaten up, children get mm -hmm. abused in the family, mm -hmm. car accidents, mm -hmm. random violence after when people is, is drunk, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, think, the, I think that you can measure all this, uh, this you, can, uh, you can select endpoints mm -hmm. to measure outcome, mm -hmm. And then you can select which of the programs run by the local community should be supported. Should be supported. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's really important to have a community to come up with their plan of how they are going to address that. Yeah, it should be guided. I think that what the community needs is to have uh, some counselling on the on the kind of program that can be run, mm. and then they can try out to adapt it. So this would be. Um, um, the, really the, the, the ideal situation for interaction in between uh, social services, healthcare services, mm -hmm. academics mm -hmm. bringing in new ideas how to approach yes. problem and, yes. and, and, and evaluate the outcomes. Mm -hmm. you, need, you need people with expertise in, uh, in statistics and epidemiology to evaluate the outcome. Right. You cannot leave a bureaucrat decide what is the outcome, if yes. it's good or not. Yes, yes. With all due respect for uh, <laughs> tape and problems, of course. Yeah, I think that's, that's really, that's quite interesting, and it's really important to have an evaluation process so that you will know whether something is successful or not. Yeah. And if not, then you can change it to something. Uh, so before we just end, if I may ask you, if you have one piece of advice for someone who is not an addict, but you know, to prevent him from going into a uh, you know, drug addiction or into drugs, what would that advice be? You know, that's very difficult because if, uh, if uh, religious leaders are not successful <laughs> in telling people, or politicians or, uh, or uh, teachers mm -hmm. or family members, mm -hmm. says, well, how can I help people? Uh, I, I think that one of the, um, one of the most difficult things for people who uh, uh, abuse drugs to compute mm -hmm. is the notion of uh, 
alternative reward. Mm -hmm. So what we know from a um, great deal of research is that um, especially drug abusers uh, suffer from so-called delay discounting. That is, immediate reward is so much important mm -hmm. for them than distant reward. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there is this, 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 this myopic approach mm -hmm. to life mm -hmm. in which you discount uh, mm -hmm. yes, the rewards that are far in the future. Yes. You study to, to get a good degree mm -hmm. and get a better employment condition and so on. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, every human suffers from that. Mm -hmm. But people using drugs are particularly prone to this kind of, mm -hmm. uh, of shortcoming. So probably one thing is to do is to... Is to is to, to help people to understand how their life can be better yes. without drugs, mm -hmm. which, is the, which is the problem. Because many people will say, you know, the only thing is I have a drug because mm -hmm. I cannot see anything else. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's the trick. Yes. What you tell to this person? Mm -hmm. What you tell to the person? When I was uh, seeing uh, addicts, uh, people with addiction as a part of my, my medical profession, mm -hmm. sometimes I was asking people, should have anything better to do with your life. <laughs> yes, Many yes. of them would ask, no. Actually, <laughs> so gives something to 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 look for uh, to people, mm -hmm. so that they can replace the desire to take something now mm -hmm. at, at the price of their health and the health and the, and the, and, and the well-being of their community. Yes. Yeah. And I think in such Instead case, of pursuing a longer-term goal. Longer-term goal. And I think in such case, maybe advocacy is really also important. The media could also play a role and all these kind of things. Yeah, but I think example at the level of example, direct example, mm. and uh, action in the local community would be important. Yeah, exactly. Try to, do, to immediately intervene. Yes. Because, you know, it has never worked to give, to make beautiful speeches on TV, okay. and because many people are using drugs, are not even listening to it. <laughs> so, so the people who are not using drugs, and they pat themselves on the back, say, oh, very, very nice talk, very <laughs> powerful, and so on, but it's not working with people who are actually in the problem. Yeah, I, I guess with this, I will, I will say thank you very much for giving that your time to, uh, you know, answer these questions, and I'm pretty sure it will be really, really helpful to people back in Nigeria and across the world. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you.